What's good, Rizzle fam? You know, ever since Takeoff tragically passed away, new conspiracies about who took his life keep coming up. However, we got some compelling evidence, and it turns out that we got a name who really could have done the crime. And this evidence seems to be coming from none other than WAC 100. Is it true that both Quavo and Offset were set up in Houston? We all know Takeoff was caught in the crossfire of bullets last during the Halloween week when an altercation between some people went south. Some sources say it was a verbal fight between Quavo and some other person over some dice money. Then there are some who alleged the fight had nothing to do with Quavo but was related to the Mod Ties guys. So Takeoff and Quavo were attending a private party at a bowling alley in Houston on the night between the 31st of October and the 1st of November. They were among 40 some people and there were some other folks from the music world present at the party as well. Most importantly, the host of the party himself, Jay Prince Jr. He turned out to be very important in this whole situation, but we'll get into that in a minute. At around 2.30, the party was interrupted when Quavo and another person whose name is not yet known known had a verbal argument. The altercation took place right in front of the bowling alley and a crowd of people quickly formed as soon as people overheard that something was going on. As it usually goes with celebrities, people got their phones recording at the same second they realized that something bad might happen. Unfortunately, something tragic happened. Quavo and the other guy with the white hat had an altercation that most likely took place because of a bet. It's not quite clear what the two were talking about, but we know for sure that they both mentioned basketball. Perhaps it was about Quavo's skills? Well, regardless, Quavo had enough of the argument, and at one point, if you pay close attention to the video that was leaked just hours after the incident, he started walking away from the spot before it got messy. Hold on, look, look, but one person who was standing in the crowd had a gun in his hand during the entire altercation. It was rather obvious from his unsettling pacing and body language that he had intended on using the thing from the beginning. It was only a matter of time before it would happen. Seconds after Quavo moved past the guy with the burner, someone from the crowd opened fire. Before you knew it, a number of shots were being fired back and forth as the people started shouting and running away. Sadly, three of those bullets hit takeoff and ended his life almost instantly. A nurse who was there once she heard the gunshots tried to help, but by the time she came to take off's body to give help, he was already late. Quavo was holding takeoff, but there was nothing to be done. He passed right there in his hands. Now, the big question that we still don't have an official answer to is who fired the guns? Who was the person behind the trigger that started the gunfight and ended up taking takeoff's life? Well, it turns out that one of the two who opened fire was a dude by the name of Lil Cam. And if you don't know who Lil Cam is, let's just say he didn't have a good relationship with the Migos, especially not with Quavo. Lil Cam's a rapper from Houston who's connected to the person we mentioned earlier, J Prince Jr. Cam's notoriously been jealous of the fame and success the Migos acquired in the last decade. Yet somehow he found himself right there at the party where Takeoff passed. According to some sources, the whole altercation between Quavo and the other dude kicked off at the Fifth Ward, part of Houston where Quavo and some of his pals were riding around in. Lil Cam is from that area. It seems like the problems that kicked off there ended up right in front of the bowling alley. Looks like J Prince Jr. got Lil Cam into the party even though he knew about his feelings towards the Migos, most importantly towards Quavo. If you take a quick glance through his social media, you'll see some very disturbing tweets. First, it was about rap. Cam dissed Quavo, called him a poor rapper. No, I can rap better than Quavo. But that was just the beginning. Later in 2018, he tweeted again saying, I'm praying for all my dudes who jam Quavo, bro. That shit is not safe. And he also said, some wrong with you if you jam Quavo, Quavo. The most disturbing and scary tweet was this one from 2017. F me goes pull up on your block with the Draco. Why in the world would Jay Prince Jr. ever put Lil Cam in the same room with the likes of Big Quavo and take off? All arrows point to the fact that this was no accident. Maybe there was something more behind Cam showing up to the party. What if it was all set up? Wack 100, who's been watching this whole takeoff situation from the back, had something to say about Lil Cam. As per usual, he was talking to some of his folks from the clubhouse, and this could be heard from their conversation. Like, just basically on some, like, hate type, jealousy type, right? You know, it's just basically hating on them. The last he said is, though, possible. I did that the other day. And yes, that is 100% correct. Lil Cam did tweet something that made him look very sus, as if he was bragging about the fact that he did the impossible. His tweet said, The impossible I did that 
that shit the other day. As you can see, he tweeted that just four days after takeoff got shot outside of the bowling alley. Wack believes Lil' Cam did it just for the clout. He said, Yeah, these youngsters, man, yeah. that, that's the new crack. Yeah. Clout is the new crack. Clout. Clout's the new crack. Moreover, he and the rest of his people believe that he got so deep into ties with Jay Prince, it looks like Lil' Cam, or the so-called person in the yellow hoodie, goes way back with Jay and his folks. Namely, it's believed that their fathers had a connection. People on the internet can't believe that Lil' Cam would go so far in this desperation. One person said, Jealousy is something else. That dude would rather spend the rest of his life in jail than to see Domingo succeed. And another fan quickly connected the dots, saying, Wow, no wonder Quavo was looking at him crazy across the dice table he knew who cam was that why he put bands on him to follow him around because none of these shoties were supposed to be there bogus situation all around migos walked into the snake pit shake my head snake pit indeed to make matters worse because of all the clout that jay prince jr has in the city there's a legit chance that he's actually protecting lil cam wax shifted our attention to the possibility that this case might just disappear altogether because some people want it to jay prince I'm gonna keep it 100. That daddy, I've been read a few things. A million dollar donation over here to the church and this, this, that. Uh, dude tied into some whole other shit we ain't gonna never see. You know, figure out. It's been too much went on around him and nothing ain't never, nothing never happened. Even with this, they slowly but slowly, slowly but surely sweeping that shit up under the rug. Bro. It looks like Jay Prince has strong connections and Lil' Cam got protection by the extension of Jay. If what Wack is saying is true, this thing with takeoff might burn a lot of bridges and cost a lot of favors. We're still waiting to see what exactly are the officials going to come up with. As of now, there's no credible story to be told. Most of what we have right now is scrapes and theories. Until the police come up with something that can stick, nothing's going to be known in the public. Also, you gotta add to the fact that one of the witnesses claimed that the only people who were allowed to keep their burners were the guys who got checked by Jay Prince, nobody else. Plus, Jay Prince walked past Takeoff's lifeless body like it was nothing. If that doesn't make him suspicious as hell, then nothing does. But before we start accusing people, let's give this case some more time to develop. In the end, we'll see what it is and who is really to blame. Meanwhile, we got some photos of Quavo, Cardi B, and Offset for the first time since Takeoff died. They attended Takeoff's wake on Thursday the 10th November, wearing all black and keeping mostly quiet. You could tell that they're still shaken by what happened to their brother. On the 11th of November, about 20,000 people will gather in order to mourn the loss of one of the most influential artists and superstars, Karshnik Karu Ball, better known as Takeoff. Offset already paid tribute to his cousin by changing his Instagram profile photo, while still had zero responses from Quavo. God only knows what's going through his head right now. We only hope that the two of them stick together in this time of sorrow and stress for the sake of Amigos' legacy that they created with Takeoff.